Hey, what is going on, everybody? Jerma here with some Bloodborne gameplay and commentary. This is going to talk about Bloodborne. This video is going to be about Bloodborne and more specifically how I feel towards these games now from from software, which is always an impossible company's name to say when you're trying to describe something that they made. I'm a fan now, and I never was. Uh, this is a Chalice Dungeon, by the way. If you don't know what these are, these are randomized dungeons that are in the game. You collect a certain amount of resources, and you consume them, and you can make dungeons, you can save their seeds and share them with people, and it's pretty interesting. It's a cool mechanic. It allows you to continue playing the game once you're done, rather than continue the cycle of new game plus, new game plus, new game plus, like you used to do in the Dark Souls games. But I finished it. I finished Bloodborne, and that's what we're going to talk about. I completed the game besides the Chalice Dungeons I still have, and that's something I haven't done in an extremely long time. Single-player games, for me, I don't really play them that often. And when I do, I play them for a couple hours, maybe, and I give up on them. I can't tell you how many times I've tried to start Fallout. I've never done that, never completed Fallout. I haven't even gotten past, like, the character creator in Fallout. I know, I fuck me, right? And I'm sorry. I'm really sorry, I know. I just have such trouble playing these games and loading them up and staying in them and staying interested in them. The last time I beat a single-player game, before Shadow of Mordor, because I really like Shadow of Mordor. Before that, though, you're talking about maybe GTA V back in 2013. Or, I mean, I don't really count Binding of Isaac, because Binding of Isaac is a very condensed... You can technically beat Binding of Isaac in 30 minutes, right? I'm talking about start-to-finish storyline game that's only designed pretty much for you to play by yourself. And yes, Bloodborne does have co-op and it does have PvP, but I feel like the game, the core game, was designed for you to experience at least most of it alone. And we'll transition from this to talk about the game Bloodborne and the Dark Souls games and how I feel about those two and how, you know, I've never beaten Dark Souls or Dark Souls 2. I gave up on them because I thought they were too much. I thought they were too hard and I thought they were way over my head in regards to everything that was in the game. I didn't get it. I just did not get it. And now after playing Bloodborne, I finally started to get it. I started to understand why these games were interesting and why they were cool, why they were fun. It was the unknown that was the more interesting thing, rather than having somebody point you in the right direction. And I loved it. I got so into Bloodborne, so into the storyline. It made me want to go back and play Dark Souls 2. Because holy shit, I love Bloodborne so much, I'm gonna love Dark Souls. That wasn't necessarily the case. Because I did go back and play Dark Souls 2, and it was a disaster. I was getting hit by every enemy, I was walking off cliffs, I was falling to my death, I was getting killed over and over again. And I said, I can't fucking do this, screw this. I am turning this off and I'm not doing it again. Wait a second. Wait a second. That is exactly what I had to do when I played Bloodborne. When I loaded up Bloodborne for the first time, I had to memorize enemies. I died over and over again at the first two or three stages of Bloodborne. It took me hours to understand where to go and why I was going there in the first place. So why then is it so hard for me to play Dark Souls when I understand, I get it, I know why I like these games? And the answer is pretty simple. If you and I were sitting on a couch right now and on the screen was Super Mario Brothers, it doesn't matter what level I'd be on, it doesn't matter what world I'd be in, if I handed you that controller, you would know exactly where to go and exactly what to do. You could not e even if you weren't even in the room, you could be stumbling into the house with a bunch of grocery bags in your arms and be like, Holy, what are you playing? Mario? Let me sit down. Oh, let me check this out. And with one hand, pick it up with like holding your chin down on the grocery bag and you'd probably be able to beat the level. Or at least know what to do to a point where it would only take you a few tries to get close to beating it. You know what I mean? Replace that with Bloodborne. Same exact scenario. I just give you the controller in a random part of Bloodborne, or a random part of Dark Souls. You, if you've never seen that before, the chances are very high that you're just gonna walk up the stairs and die, or you're gonna get far enough, but not know where to go. And then you're gonna look at me and you're gonna go, hey, what am I, what am I supposed to do here? Do I open this door? This door's locked, I can't go in here. And then I'm gonna say, uh, yeah, you know, I have like 70 hours in Bloodborne. I fucking don't remember if that's the door 
that you get the key. And hold on. Let me open the wiki page. Because this is really confusing the shit out of me. The open-endedness of Bloodborne and Dark Souls. And just the sheer amount of stuff that's so cryptic. That you need to almost figure out as a community. To even know what the item does. Is something that I've never really experienced before. And that's going back to the why I haven't played Dark Souls. Or why I haven't really gotten into it. And how I didn't really like it. You have to relearn it all again. There is no universal just sit down and play it because everything is so open-ended and there's so much information in each one of these games that it's daunting. And it's something that I have to get over because I really do, like I said, I do want to go back and I want to beat Dark Souls, I want to beat Dark Souls 2, but I have to take my brain out of the this is Bloodborne, I know Bloodborne. It's like, yeah, there's a million similarities to these games from game to game. But you have to just learn it. You have to just let the experience happen for you and know what you're getting into before you start it. So that wraps up this video. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you guys all next time. Probably gonna play some New Game Plus in Bloodborne. Although I do want to make a new character at some point. I don't know. I might just give up on it entirely and try to beat Dark Souls or Dark Souls 2. I don't know. But we'll cross that bridge when I crush it. We'll cross that bridge when I crush it. Thanks, everybody. Take it easy. Have a good day. And goodbye.